Welcome to Module 19, which will examine phishing. Phishing attacks target users and user groups rather than specific applications or servers. The attack consists of an intruder attempting to impersonate entities, such as companies or financial institutions, in order to trick a victim into visiting a specially crafted website designed to look like the legitimate service. The page is instead set up to deceive users and steal submitted passwords and other types of sensitive information. Early phishing attacks mostly targeted bank customers. Attackers try to register a domain similar to the official bank domain, and then set up a website which masqueraded as the legitimate bank page. Next, they sent emails to potential customers of the bank, which requested them to log into a service and unlock their account. These attacks have become widespread. You can probably find a number of phishing emails in your mailbox. But what are the distinctive features of these attacks? First of all, the address to which the email will direct us will frequently look suspicious. If you pay close attention, you'll discover typos in the domain name or weird parts at the end of the URL. Since diacritical marks have been allowed in URLs, fishers make use of internationalized domain names to launch attacks. Another key aspect is the look and feel of the service. The layout might differ slightly from the layout of the legitimate bank website. The site could contain graphic errors, and some elements could be non-functional. Early phishing attacks were constructed with painstaking precision, so the forged websites were nearly undistinguishable from legitimate services. Today, phishing emails are sent in bulk, and websites are created semi-automatically, which means that the forged websites will rarely look legitimate enough to deceive us. What's more, these attacks are launched internationally by groups of criminals who frequently don't speak the native tongue of the attacked institution's customers. The messages are translated by free machine translation services and abound in grammatical and syntactical errors. Sometimes they are practically incomprehensible. We'll take a look at some sample messages which serve as a warning. You can see here an attack which targets users of a popular auction service. The attackers have done a good job recreating the design of the service. The address is www.allegro.home.ro. The home.ro top-level domain should alert us. You can see in the image the content of a message sent in a different phishing attack. Everything seems to point to it being sent from Allegro servers. Remember, however, that attackers can use gates which allow them to adopt any email address. To make sure the email has really been sent by Allegro and not by Fishers, you should carefully examine the headers which record specific paths used in sending the email. Also, as you can see, the message contains serious linguistic errors, which again should alert us. This is another example of a phishing attack targeting a popular social networking service. The message looks innocent on the surface, but let's pay attention to the fact that the URL begins with www8. Remember that if the sent message is formatted in HTML, the visible URL could be different from the actual address to which you'll be directed. You can see here a message sent to customers of a bank. How can we protect ourselves against these attacks? First of all, you should be careful with submitting sensitive data such as passwords, identifiers, or credit card numbers. Remember that very few companies request such information to unlock an account. This is especially true in the case of banks. You can unlock your account by calling a consultant or contacting a local branch of the bank. Another key point is never trusting the links contained in incoming mail. 
Even if a link seems trustworthy, it's better to manually provide a known URL rather than click on the link provided in the message. By doing so, you'll be sure that the website you visit is the legitimate service. Then you can make sure whether the information passed in the message, that an account has been locked, was true. If there really are any problems, use the official service and its functionalities to be sure that you don't give up crucial information to attackers. It might also be worth it to check HTTPS certificates. An increasing number of websites use the encrypted HTTPS protocol to verify server identity. You can display in your browser the details of a certificate and check its validity, subject, and issuer. Browsers attempt to verify key information such as expiration date or issuer trustworthiness on their own. You can, however, check by yourself whether a certificate has been issued for the service you're trying to log into. If you suspect phishing, it's good to contact the service administrator and share your suspicions by sending them an original email. This could help in verifying the information contained in the email and protecting other customers. If you want to contact the administrator, remember not to use the reply option, as the email address could be forged. Check the legitimate service page for contact data. Another good idea is to examine the physical URL of a link. Don't rely on the text displayed in the HTML messages. It's safer to copy a target address and make sure it leads to a legitimate location. If the URL seems suspicious, don't visit it. That's all in Module 19. Thanks for your attention and see you in Module 20 which will discuss automated security testing.